Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this tutorial I'm going to show you five winter themed photo effects that you can add on your photos in Photoshop. This is going to include adding falling snow, creating a more icy blue color effect, creating a foggy lens, and even adding a frosty text effect if you like. So in order to begin, have your photo open and I'm going to start by showing you how to create the falling snow. So we don't want to work directly on the photo layer. So we're actually going to go to layer, new layer, press OK and now we have this new blank layer for us to work on. Next head over to your brush tool, you can also press B on your keyboard to highlight it and open up the default round brushes and start with your hard round brush. If you don't see this then click the cog wheel, press reset brushes and you should see your default brushes at the top. Then you want to go to window and open up the brush panel. Here we can begin customizing certain elements of this brush to make some scattered snow. So I'm going to turn the spacing all the way up and keep in mind we're on the brush tip shape menu. So turn the spacing all the way up to a thousand and you can also adjust the angle slightly so it's at off kilter on an angle and you can turn the roundness of the circle down from 100% to more like 80 or 90%. This is going to make these circles more oval like and it will look more like they are falling. Next you want to turn on the scattering and also make sure shape dynamics is turned on. And in the shape dynamics menu turn size jitter all the way up to 100%. You can turn the control off of pen pressure if you are not using a Wacom tablet. That is going to allow your mouse to create the size jitters. Next you can also include a little bit of angle jitter. So I'll turn mine up just to about 20%. That's going to randomize the angle of each little snowflake. And you can turn the roundness jitter a bit if you want. That's just going to help randomize your snowflakes and make them look more unique. Now in the scattering menu, you can also turn the scattering up to all the way up to a thousand percent really. And just make sure the count is at one, otherwise you'll be adding way too much snowflakes. Now you can minimize your brushes panel and make sure you have your foreground color set to white. If you don't have this then just click D on your keyboard to default your colors to black and white and then press X to switch them or you can use these two buttons right here. So with white as your foreground color then you can click and make some paint strokes on your canvas and see how the brush looks. That looks about right for me. However you can adjust the size of your brush up and down depending on your photo in order to get just the right size of snowflakes. And keep in mind we're going to layer this. So first we'll do a decent sized snowflake. So I'll keep my brush at 100. But I'm going to make some strokes and make sure things are even and spaced out and not clashing together. If there's ever a time where two big dots interfere with each other in a weird way, then you can always just go to Edit, Undo or Command Z and undo it. And I'm filling in these spots pretty evenly. I'm, I'm using my eye here. I can actually just click on some points rather than dragging the brush. So once you have an even coating of snow applied on the layer, we're going to add some motion blur. So just for good measure, I'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object. That's just going to allow me to create smart filters which are editable. So we can always go back if we mess up. And then I'm going to go to filter, blur, motion blur. So keep an eye on the direction things in your photo seem to be moving. In this case it looks like things are moving from the top right to the bottom left. So I'll create a slight angle in that direction, so about 75 degrees for me. And then edit the direction of your photo so that your snowflakes kind of separate out. It looks like they're falling in motion. I'll press OK at about 175 pixels of distance. And then we're going to add another blur except this time go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and this is going to add a general blurriness so that it doesn't look so fake adds a little bit more realistic touch to it. So press OK and if you like you can lower the opacity just a bit maybe 80 or 90 percent just to blend things in a bit more. Now since this is all one depth of field you could say and one similar size of snowflake what I like to do is actually stack a different size of snowflake on top afterwards. So one quick trick you can do is just duplicate this with command J, press command T to open up your free transform tools and then holding shift and alt 
on the corner, you can click and drag and enlarge things a bit to create some bigger snowflakes and it gives you a bit more of depth of field. Alternatively, you could go to a new layer, layer, new layer, and repeat the whole process that we did before, except instead of using a 100 pixel brush, you could use a bigger brush, add a few bigger snowflakes exactly where you want them, and then apply both of the blurs once again and come up with your final effect. So this is what that looks like. You have your one layer of snowflakes, a bit bigger, and then way close to the camera, and we added way more Gaussian blur in that case. So I'm okay with that for my snowflake effect. Take your time on it. The more you perfect your brush and perfect just the right amount of blur for your specific photo, the more realistic your snow effect will look. Now next, I'm gonna show you two ways to get a colder and more wintry feeling color grading onto your photo. So first, when you're thinking about wintry photos in the cold and a lot of snow, there's not a lot of saturation in the photo. So what you can do to achieve that look is go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation, and just turn the saturation slider way down until things get a lot more desaturated and foggy looking. So I'll turn it down about negative 50, and then also turn the lightness slider up a bit to add a bit of that brightness and fog. So I'll turn that up plus 10. So now we have a desaturated and brighter look. However, we wanna inject some blue onto it. So the next step that I can show you guys is adding photo filters to get a icy blue color. So this time head over to layer, new adjustment layer, photo filter, and you should find one called cooling filter 82. It's the third cooling filter or you can add a blue color of your own. I just think this one looks all right. And if you check preserve luminosity, it'll keep the bright points of your photo. I think it looks good in most cases. However, there's two different ways that you can use this photo filter adjustment layer. One, you could just keep the density at a small percentage, like 15, to influence the blue color of the photos a bit, and that looks fine. Or two, you could increase the density a lot to really make the photo blue, except if you do it this strong, then you'll have to apply a blending mode onto the photo filter. So if you apply a blending mode like soft light or overlay, that's gonna give you a more cinematic yet still cold feel. So soft light or overlay is a bit too strong, so you might have to lower the opacity. But those are the two directions you could take it. You could keep it on normal blending mode at a low density just to influence a little bit of that color or if you wanted to go to the cinematic color grading route, you could put it on something like overlay and turn the density of the filter up a bit stronger and go with that look. So I'm gonna go to the cinematic route here. I'll turn my photo filter up to 70% density and then I'll keep it on soft light blending mode at 65% opacity. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a foggy lens effect which is kind of like a vignette, except a bright vignette. So go to Layer, New Layer, and you can press Command-A to select all, which will select the entire thing, or you could grab your rectangular marquee tool, make sure you're working on Add to Selection mode, and highlight your entire canvas. Either way, once you have a selection of the entire canvas, you wanna right-click and stroke inside with a color of white. Now the amount of width of pixels that you're gonna need is gonna be different depending on how large your photo is. Again, this is a pretty large photo document, but I'm gonna use 20 pixels. Maybe you could try 10 if your photo is smaller. Play around with it, but 20 pixels inside and press OK. And you should see it creates a white stroke around your photo. And then you wanna to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and turn up the amount of pixels in the radius until you get a foggy lens effect. And you can even see what it looks like if you place it underneath the photo filter, underneath the hue saturation layer, that way it still blends in with that blue color. So you see what that does is it creates a foggy lens effect. Finally, for the fifth and final effect, I'm gonna show you how to create a kind of foggy, frosty text effect. Now this isn't like snow or ice text, it's more like if your window was really cold and you drew some text on it with your finger. So I'll grab my text tool and I'll click and I'll type out a word. 
so text you can use whatever font you want now I'm gonna right click that text layer and open up the blending options panel here I want to turn the fill opacity all the way down to zero that's gonna erase the inside contents of the text and then I want to turn on an outer glow now make sure this is at 100% opacity at white as the color and then turn the blending mode on overlay you can then adjust the size to be as spread out or as uh, thin as you want but essentially that's how much fog you'll get and then to make things a little bit less sharp and exact I'm also going to turn on an inner glow and instead of having a really large size for the inner glow I'm going to keep it kind of tight so it doesn't eat away too much into the inside of the text so for me just about 30 or 40 pixels okay and then I'm going to keep this also at 100% opacity on overlay white so that's just a kind of interesting kind of foggy text effect that will blend in with certain photos you could definitely get more in depth with the blending options and play around with it but those are five winter themed effects that you can create in Photoshop hopefully you guys learned one or two of them that you liked you can apply them on a photo of your own if you guys did like this video definitely leave a like on it below it helps me out and let me know what you thought in the comments if you guys want to check out more Photoshop tutorials, I have playlists on my channel with tons of them. And definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future creative type of videos. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.